Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we'll be taking a look at a master cylinder, which you can see right over here. This aluminum part at the bottom, which is bolted onto this black part, which is the brake booster. The brake booster uses engine vacuum to make the braking action much easier. A faulty brake booster leaking vacuum hose to the brake booster over here coming in or faulty brake booster check valve will result in the driver having to apply much more force when stopping the vehicle. What I'd like to do is show you the inner workings of a master cylinder, explain common problems, and show the parts that usually fail. Rebuild kits for master cylinders are available at a minimal cost. Okay, let's get started. Okay, this master cylinder I picked up at the junkyard just for this video at a minimal cost. It is exactly the same one that's in my vehicle. Over here, this is the end, bolted onto the brake booster with two bolts. The brake booster has a pin or a rod that sticks out that's adjustable. Goes right inside this hole. There is a bottom, as you can see in this image, right over here. When you push down on the pedal, pushes this in. There's a retaining ring right here, holding the piston in there. Let me just demonstrate using this right here. You hold this there and you push in. You can see it goes in and out, just like it would be in the vehicle. Over here on the top is where the reservoir pushes in. There's a nipple on the bottom of my reservoir on both sides once it's pushed in with a little bit of lubricant on it. You put a bolt right through here and it keeps the reservoir on top. These very rarely go. They're removable. Pop this right out. Better look at the inside right there. Replaceable in the event yours does dry out and crack or if the diameter gets larger than it should be with age because it got very dry and it starts to leak. Push this right back in here again. Here's your ports going to each one of the wheels. This one here and this one here go to the front brakes and the two on the bottom right there go to the rear brakes. Now it's very important in your braking system is that you do not want any air in the system. The brakes must be properly bled. If you do have air in the system, when you push down on the pedal, it's going to feel very squishy or very spongy. So all the air must be out. The reason for that is air can be compressed unlike the liquid in the lines. Keep in mind, this generates a lot of pressure under normal braking few hundred to several hundred PSI and if you went to jam the brakes on in an emergency it could be well over a thousand PSI in those brake lines. Now sometimes what happens you may see a leak by your brake booster where this is connected fluid running down the booster between the master cylinder and the booster and usually that's because of a faulty seal when I remove this retaining ring using retaining ring pliers or even a small needle nose You'll see what I'm talking about. There's a seal, and when those dry out, fluid can be pushed outward and leak right over here. So let me take this right here, remove it, and show you the inside. Needle nose should do the trick. Let's try it. There you go. Let me slide this out first. Right. And there's another one, hard to see, but there's one in here. Let me bang this down hard, and it should come out. There it is. All right. So this is the inner one. That's the outer. Let's take a peek at the inside now. You'll see that's empty. Now inside here you can see there are two springs and a bunch of seals. Right over here you can see the seal. And what's important to note is that it's cup shaped. So as fluid is being compressed inside the cylinder, it's going to want to make this cup spread outward more 
to make an even tighter seal against those walls. If this is dried out, what's going to happen when you push your foot on the pedal to get that fluid to generate that high pressure, it's going to blow past here and then you're going to have a problem with your braking and the pedal could be very low. So you want to check these out. They come off very easy. Just lubricate them, pop them back on. Over here is another cup seal. Fluid gets over here. That makes this side open up. Push it outward. And you also have fluid in between here to keep everything lubricated as this is moving back and forth, generating that pressure. So let me put this alongside the master cylinder just to show you what it looks like outside of the cylinder as it operates. Okay, so this is what it looks like when it's inside the unit, inside the cylinder, right about there. And you can see this spring is more compressed than this one. And the reason for that is when this is inserted, it's going to have to be slid in further. So it's going to be compressing that spring. And as you can see, the two springs are going to be very similar once it's compressed inside that cylinder and the retaining ring put back in position. Over here you can see the two holes. And if you look at the positioning, all right, the hole on the left allows fluid to enter in front of this cup. And when you push down on the brake, it forces that fluid into the brake lines. You pull back, it draws some in, then you push again, and it scoops it up through that hole right in front of here, pushes it through the brake lines. And the same thing happens with the one at the rear behind it. Everything is occurring at the same time. And if there's too much force being detected on one side, what will happen, you'll have more pressure going onto the opposite side. So if this brake really starts to get tight, this one won't squeeze down any further, and it'll allow this one to squeeze further down which is not easy to do, but there it goes, very tight. Really not much to go wrong with these, so it's really foolish to go out and buy a replacement master cylinder when all you have to do is change one, two, three, four seals, and possibly new seals for the reservoir. This over here is the seal. If you have a leak coming out of the end over here by the brake booster, this is the one you would have to replace. When looking at the inner walls of the master cylinder, they must be perfectly smooth and no score marks. If you see any score marks inside the cylinder, you're going to have to replace it with a new one. When the master cylinder is apart, it's also a good idea to take a bright light, make sure all the holes inside here are perfectly clear, take a very, very tiny wire, push them inside each one of these holes, go inside the ports just to ensure everything is clear. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Thank you very much for watching.